I guess first I have to start with a couple of disclaimers. Uh, I refer to the Faculty of Fine Arts as <clears throat> architecture, painting, and sculpture. However, that is not the case here. But I believe that the points I make, although largely framed in, a, uh, in, a, in the realm of the visual arts, really does apply equally as well to music, which I can't hear, being nearly tone deaf, and theater, which uh, you're all blessedly, uh, I've been kept off the stage, so you know what I will. Okay. Art appreciation is perhaps a dated term, but not a dated idea. In fact, it might be an idea whose time has come. We assume that as the product of the efforts of a faculty of fine arts, you do appreciate art, or at least still appreciate art after you have gone beyond appreciation towards the practice of art. Although this is a convocation address for the faculty of the fine arts, I don't want my remarks to exclude all the possibilities offered by the commercial and educational world. I take the fine arts to be a holdover from the Renaissance, which includes architecture, painting, and sculpture. But there is certainly no reason why your original impulse of art appreciation and your training and or education here won't lead you beyond these limits. Of course, I don't need to remind you that when, wherever you go, you will face constraints, psychological and practical. Hopefully, you won't lose sight of the original insights of art appreciation that put you in the predicament that you find yourselves in today. I can only suggest that finding a way to expand and enjoy those original impulses is a really good idea. Now, I'm sure that the tone of the address is beginning to sound simplistic. OK, you say, we get art appreciation. But will it really help us to make our way in the world? You notice that I didn't say it will help, it will help us get a job that that euphemistic abbreviation for gainful and meaningful employment. My thought is that you've gotten this far by riding on the back of art appreciation. If you continue to love him and nurture him, you might be, to be surprised to see how far he can carry you. Perhaps he can get you to the finish line at Pimlico, as Animal Kingdom will try to to do this afternoon. I wrote about abstract art in the mid-80s in a series of lectures called Working Space. Some, some of you, I guess that doesn't really work age-wise here, but rather your faculty will remember perhaps that I delivered them at that school across the river, the one with the retrograde maroon hockey jerseys. At that time, I was reluctant and fearful to write about art. I wasn't really afraid of words. I was really afraid of words, especially words about art coming from my own mouth. I suppose this turned out to be a mini midlife crisis. I had been painting, making art for at least 25 years. But when I looked back at the art that, I, that had driven me into this whirlpool predicament, Francisco Zubaran at the Louvre, Roger van der Weyden at the Philadelphia Museum, Manet's Christ at the Metropolitan, and many, many more. I didn't really know anything about it or about them. There seemed to be a gap to some and a gulf to others between the great Western art of the past and the abstract art of the 20th century. I wasn't worried about defending abstract art. After all, if they had <clears throat> if there hadn't been great Western art of the past, there wouldn't have been modern abstract art, for sure Malevich, Kandinsky, and Mondrian. But the problem was how to really understand the art that I had appreciated so deeply. On one level, the trick is obvious. I had to appreciate it more. In the end, it came down to two things. I had to see and know more. Seeing meant shunning reproductions, 
and facing the works directly. For me, the best and most informative experience is to find a work of art of the past that is still preserved in the space it was intended to, to fill originally. Uh, the best example, because it is so exquisite and so manageable at the same time, is the Anibale Caracci and Caravaggio Chapel in the Santa Maria del Popolo in Rome. I recommend it to everybody. It never, it never ceases to amaze. Seeing more is, in a sense, obvious, and so is knowing more. Art appreciation has taught us that the literature counts. Art history is not for the faint of heart, and I think that this is a good time as any to express my regrets that working space has no footnotes and no bibliography. Yet most of the ideas and a lot of the inspiration to carry on came from the art historians that I loved and respected. It all started at school with Bobby Rosenblum, Jim Holderbaum, Bill Seitz, and such far out people as Kurt Weitzman, and then Rudolf Wittkauer, Julius Hell, and on and on to Maya Shapiro, and actually the whole faculty of the NYU School of Fine Arts. And on again to the writers and editors, such as Michael Fried and Philip Leder. And so I hope that the surviving art and its literature which make up your experience of art appreciation will continue to give you a lift and affordable high. Thank you.